Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to the Life Center Church. Thank you all for coming in person. Amen. Amen. And thank you all for joining us online. Of course, part of our DNA, our culture code is prayer. So why don't you go ahead and stand on your feet if you're able to, if you're at home. Why don't you go ahead and stand as well? If you have your Bibles, Isaiah chapter 43. I love this passage. Isaiah chapter 43, verse number 25 says, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake. And watch this. He says, I will remember your sins no more. Now, I don't know if that's enough to get you excited, but what I just read, God says that any time that we miss the mark, any time we get out of fellowship, when we really come back to him with our whole hearts and we mean it and we repent, he said, I won't even remember what you did wrong. Amen. Thank you for that one amen. That was from my wife. Let me try that again. He said that no matter what you did wrong, if you mean it from your heart, he says, I won't even remember what you did wrong. Now think about that because that's the God that we serve that regardless of any mistake that we would ever make in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I've made some mistakes. Anybody else? But he said that when you come to him, he says, I will remember your sins no more. Now let me read the rest of this. Then he says, because I won't re remember your sins, he says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together, declare thou that thou may be justified. And so we have a responsibility to come together, as the Bible says, to plead together with God, to get in agreement with him, to pray for other people. That's an awesome responsibility. That's an awesome task, but we don't have to be worried to do it by ourselves. We can do it with God. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, what an honor and what a privilege it is that we can come before the throne of grace today. We know that you are the God of all grace and your grace, it is sufficient for us. You said that we should plead together. So we come into an agreement with you to pray according to the will of God, which is the word of God, so that your will can be done the same way that it's taking place in heaven. Your will will be established and it will take place here in the earth. So Father, we pray together as believers, we lift up the people in Ukraine. We pray, Father, and we ask that there would be peace. It would be the peace of God that will be able to rule and to reign in their hearts. We come against the spirit of fear that's able to run rapid in that country. We know, Father, that you are the Prince of Peace and you will provide peace even in the midst of war even in the midst of chaos even in the midst of drama so we ask that you would send peace to those families peace to those that have lost loved ones those that have lost relatives we pray father god that not only would they have peace in their heart we pray that there would be a cease fire we pray father against all of the strife and all of the division and all the violence that's taking place and as you send peace we ask that you would open up the doors and open up opportunities father for people to receive Jesus into their heart so that they would be able to walk no longer in fear no longer struggling but Father, we pray that you would be the answer that what they need during this time. We pray that they would have all of the resources that are needed to rebuild, to repair, and to restore. We pray, Father God, that there is no lack in those areas. We pray that you're sending resources from the north and from the south and from the east and from the west. We pray, Father God, that not only will you send all of the resources, but we pray that there would be restoration and divine healing that will take place in the hearts, that will take place in the minds, that it will take place even in their physical bodies. We pray, Father God, that your perfect will is being done even in the midst of chaos. Father, we pray today for our nation. We pray, Father God, that our nation doesn't need another law. Our nation doesn't need another politician, but our nation needs a demonstration of the love of God. So we pray today, Father God, that you would send us unto the highways, that you would send us into the byways to be the hands, to be the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said that they would know us 
by our love. So Father, send us into the grocery stores. Send us into the malls. Send us, Father God, on our jobs. Send us into the schools to be a representation of the love of God. And use us to be able to minister a word that's in due season, a word of encouragement. Use us to give. Use us to sow our time, ultimately, Father, so that they will come to know you as their Lord, their master and their savior we pray father god that every person that will hear this message today whether in person whether online we declare that they'll be changed by the power of god by the glory of god by the anointing of god that they won't just hear your word they won't just go through the motion father god but they'll have an experience and encounter with you that will have them change and transform into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, because we prayed according to the will of God, which is your word, we know that you've already heard us. Now, as an expression of our faith today, we lift up our hands and we lift up our voice on one accord to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise, for you are already moving in our nation, moving in our world, and moving in our services. In Jesus' name, amen. Draw your attention to the screens. Welcome, friends and family, to the Life Center. Thank you, Mike. Can y'all say welcome to the Life Center Church? Are you all excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. So good to see you all out here today. And thank you, family, for joining us online. I think you all can see just by the pictures that we're not afraid to put ourselves out there for Jesus. I did have a red nose on my uh, on my nose there because we were actually doing a benefit for children uh, during the holiday time or whatever. So we wanted to be a blessing to the kids. So guess what? If we got to put on clown suits and put a red nose on, if it'll help them to understand the gospel and receive Jesus at the age of 8, 9, 10, and 11, then we're willing to put ourselves out there to do it. Amen. And then also thank you all so much for everyone who donated for our diaper drive. We actually collected seven thousand diapers to help families in need. In one month. 
in one month. And we weren't even having services every week at that time. We were just pre-launching the church at that time. So it definitely went to, so you know where your seed went. It went to go help families in need. We actually partnered together with the Metropolitan Detroit Diaper Bank. They're amazing people. Come to find out she's been in the area for quite some time. And families, they just come up who are in need to, uh, to pick up diapers, formula, and even adult incontinent supplies for our senior saints as well too so we're just excited that we were able to do our part in seeding into the vision of the metropolitan detroit diaper bank so if this is your very first time visiting with us here at the life center church if you can pull out your phone if you're tech savvy and then just scan the qr code let us know that you're here we want to send you something to say thank you for joining us on today uh, as a result of your uh, visit with us today if not when you came in I don't have a card. If you came in, there's thank you, thank you, Tracy. Draw your attention to Treasy right there. If you, if you don't want to pull out your phone, there's a little card that was on the table out there. And basically it says, let's connect. And basically what that is, there's a section that says, if it's your first time, let us know that you're here. And at the end of service, when we collect the offering, drop it in the offering bucket uh, at the door. And then also, I'm going to put this out here on the front end of the service. If you already know that this is your church and you want to partner together with us, uh, a lot of churches call it membership. We have chosen to call it partnership because you're partnering together with the vision here in this particular church so if you decided that you want to partner together with us fill out the partnership uh, side of the card and then let us know so that we can let you know when our very first uh, partnership meeting is which is in about 30 days so thank you all for joining us go ahead uh, draw your attention to the screen may I have your attention please you are wondering what today's lesson will be about Today's lesson is going to be about emotions. Now we all start with a primary set, and as we grow older, we acquire more of them. When your emotions control your action, it affects not only yourself, but the people around you. This will help to down. Emotions are centered in the lower part of the brain. It is complicated, yes, but mysterious no longer. Emotional behavior is largely involuntary. <laughs> I can't believe that. We have certain basic emotions which are controlled subconsciously. Notice your own emotional reactions. What did you feel? What did you do? Under control, your emotions can make you healthier and happier and improve the lives of people around you. This is pretty clever. That's a rather simplified suggestion of a complex mental process. But you get the idea. Uh, I guess based off of that video, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can tell what we're going to talk about today. Can, can you all help me out this morning? What do you all think the topic is for today? Emotion. Emotion. So let's go ahead and pray and we'll get into this because last week uh, I didn't finish. So there was a lot that I left on the table and I got to kind of uh, tie it all in together today. Let's pray. Father, what an honor and privilege it is that you said that we can come before the throne of grace, Father. So today we receive another me measure of the grace of God, another measure of the wisdom of God, another measure of the anointing of God. And we know, Father, that it is the anointing that removes burdens. It is the anointing that will literally destroy the yokes of bondage. Holy Spirit, we trust you today to say what needs to be said and in the manner and in the style and only which you can say it. I covenant with you in advance. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips the infallible word of God that will literally change and transform the hearts of your people. When it's all said and done, Father, we'll all be mindful to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise for everything that you would say and everything that you reveal unto us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we've been really ministering on the subject of an audience of one. An audience of one, we're really talking about who we should live our lives for. And it's important that we get this right during this time that we're living in right now. Because so many people will live their lives for someone else instead of recognizing that I was really created to live my life for God. 
every aspect of who I am, my mind, my will, my emotions, my body, my intellect, everything that's on the inside of me was literally created for one person. Now, everybody gets blessed as a result of who you live for or they should be blessed or they should be encouraged or they should be enhanced based on who we live our lives for. And so we've been really talking about the importance of living for God. So our text has been Matthew chapter 22. And we'll deal with the soul round today. Y'all remember that song back in the day, I'm a soul man? Oh, oh okay, I'm talking to, okay. I, I guess I got a younger crowd today. <laughs> There was a song way back in the day that says, I'm a soul man. Okay, now, okay, there we go, there we go. Well, you're not a soul man. You have a soul. So let's read this. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Thou shalt love the Lord God with all, notice he said, all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Verse 38 says, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So today we'll talk about glorifying God or an audience of one, and in particular, this area that's called the soul. Yes. Your soul, if I give you a definition, is made up of your feelings. So Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all of your feelings. Now, it is possible to love God with all of your feelings. Now, we tend to love everybody else and demonstrate some good feelings, or we can tend to demonstrate some not so good feelings to other people. I, I got a one um over here. If we just want to keep it honest and we want to keep it real today. But he says we should love God with all of our feelings. Then he says we should love God with all of our thoughts. Now don't act as though sometimes you and I don't have wrong thoughts. But we should get to the place and get to the point in our lives when you're talking about walking with God. When you're talking about having a relationship with God, that our thoughts should be pleasing to him. Thank you, Mike, for that one. Amen. I, I can tell it's going to be y'all going to fight me today on this message. I can tell. He says we should love the Lord God with all of our perceptions. So our perceptions for people can be our reality. And so we can, based off of what we see, when we don't even know a person, we can perceive that they are a certain way. They talk a certain way. They have certain things or they don't have certain things based upon our perception. But yet the Bible says we should love God with how we perceive people. Then he says we should love God with all of our emotions. And we've got to be mindful of our emotions because we can have an emotional outburst and they're not even necessary. Okay. Now, I wrote this down. Every day we should respond to life circumstances either according to the word of God or how we act out emotionally. So when life or when we face life's challenges or life's situations, we're going to respond to those situations one of two ways. Either we're going to respond based off of the word or we're going to respond emotionally. Now, ask yourself this question. How do you deal with change when it happens? Because every single day, every single year, change will take place. So this morning, so for me, I don't write examples down. I just believe that God would give me an example on the spot. 
and that's a part of me using my faith. So this morning, uh, when my son had his clothes on, uh, I, I looked at his clothes and I'm like, well, I just bought those clothes. And his body is responding to change, but he doesn't have control over his body or when it changes. And so how did I respond to that? Did I respond, boy, go put on some more clothes? Or did I respond, man, that boy needs some new pants. He just grew out of the clothes that we just bought him. In other words, as life hits you, you are going to respond one of two ways. Either you're going to respond from God's word or you might have any, an emotional response to something possibly that you can't even control. Come on, come on. Okay, so let's, let's kind of get into this today. So point number one, our imagination has been given to take us past your troubled past. No, now catch that. Your imagination has been given to take you past, P-A-S-S. Your troubled past, P-A-S-T. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We don't fully understand how and why God gave us an imagination. And we've got to be able to use what God gave us to be able to walk in what he's already provided. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, when the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to the church, he says for us to cast down imaginations. When you look at that word imaginations, it actually means logical thinking. So things that actually make sense, we have to cast it down. Notice that God is not going to do what he's asking you to do. And we have to understand that because we can get to the place in our lives when we expect God to do something and yet God is expecting you to do it. We can be praying about something and all of a sudden our prayers aren't being responded to because God has given you the authority, God has given you the dominion, and God has given you a voice to make it come to pass. And yet when we don't understand that, we can sit here and then blame God for God not coming through. And yet God is saying, I put the ball in your hand. So he says, destroy logical thinking, things that actually make sense. This word imaginations also means human reasoning. Things that you reason, yeah. You can talk yourself out of the will of God because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense when the Bible says, give and it shall be given back unto you. Well, when you look at your bank account or you're looking at your checking account and you're like, you know what? I'm not about to give nothing because if I give it, I don't have it. But it doesn't make sense. But yet he says, give and it shall be given back unto you. So in order to get the process going, you got to give. Then he says, when you give, it'll come back to you. Good measure, 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In other words, there's a running over return that will come back to you when you make a decision to give when it doesn't make sense. So he says, destroy that. Notice, God is not going to do this for you. We have to do it. We are in partnership with God. See, believe it or not, in order for God's will and God's plan to come to pass in the earth, he has to have someone that will literally get in line with him. He has to have someone that would agree with him. He has to have someone that will say, Yes, Lord, I will obey. Yes, Lord, I will do what you're asking me to do, even though I don't even see how you're going to do this. He didn't ask you to figure it out. What he asked you to do is simply get an agreement and say yes. yes. Things or the things of God, folks, they don't make sense. That's why we have to trust him. Without faith, trust, confidence, reliance, and the ability to lean on what God said, it's impossible to please God. But that person who's willing to say, Lord, I don't see it. I don't feel like it. It has nothing to do with it. That person who says, yes, Lord, God will do, listen to me, God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can even ask or dream of. If you're dreaming it right now, God will do above what you're dreaming about. All he's asking you to do to say is, yes, Lord, I'm in agreement with what you said. He says, cast down human reasoning That's so good. watch this Come on. destroy what makes sense it doesn't make sense folks it, it, listen be, before we came back here what what we believed at that season was that the Lord was dealing with us to go to another state now, the Lord had put a state on my heart while we were in Massachusetts. Yes, and I told my wife about it. Yes, and this is where the wisdom of God comes in. Because although he told me to do something at that moment, I've been walking with God long enough. I understood that he meant to pray it out, <laughs> not to act on it at that moment. So before we came, I thought initially before going back to the Lord and praying it out that we were moving to some place where it was warm. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, I told my wife and all of a sudden she gets online. She finding houses. I mean, she finding all kind of stuff. We, we start dreaming and start throwing away. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You can't throw away clothes. What? Not yet. Not yet. Then I went, yeah, palm trees everywhere. Then I went back to the Lord, and what the Lord was having me to do was to pray for that particular city. <laughs> she said, I know. It didn't make sense. See, if it makes sense, you don't need faith. So watch this. He says, destroy logical thinking. Destroy human reasoning. Destroy what makes sense and everything, watch this, that's trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. So logical thinking, human reasoning, things that make sense will try to elevate themselves higher than God's word. And if we don't take the time to destroy it, or to cast it down or to get rid of it instead of Jesus and the word being Lord in our lives, in our thinking, what will make sense will dominate our lives. 
Then he says, we have the responsibility to bring into captivity, into a prison, every thought. You can control your thought life. Boy, let me. You can control what you think. Your mind don't have to wander. You know, I know men think differently than women, and, and women's minds are like spaghetti all over the place and emotional all over the place. And men can put things in a compartment and not even think about it. So I'm helping, I'm helping married folks out here right now. And I'm helping single people out here right now. But do you realize that even though a woman operates that way and all emotional at times, do you realize men can also be emotional? Yes, indeed. But according to what we see here, we can bring into captivity every thought. Here's the key. To the obedience of the word of God. So here is the issue. The reason why your mind is all over the place and you have these emotional outbursts or you are not able to control how you respond is simply because you have not brought every thought into the obedience of what the word says. See, God gave us an imagination so that we can see ourselves the way he sees us. You don't have an imagination so that you can remember the past. Sometimes your imagination will take you back 15 years ago and you will start reliving what they said about you. You will start rehashing and rehearsing and remembering how they treated you. And then it'll cause you, listen to me, to shut down toward that person, to really see them differently the way God sees them. And it'll cause you to treat them differently than the way God desires for you to treat them. All because you didn't allow your imagination to be used to take you into the realm. Listen to me. The realm of all things are possible. Watch this. God gave us an imagination so we can see by the spirit the things that don't exist. Experiences that you haven't had. And ideas that have not happened, but were written and prepared for you before the very foundations of the world. Your imagination creates unlimited impossibilities. Your imagination is the source of your creativity. In fact, let me say this. You don't even have one original thought. Either your thoughts are coming from God or your thoughts are suggestions from the devil. You don't have an original thought. Now, when you go back to Genesis, the book of beginnings, this won't be on the screen. This is kind of how I'm flowing right now. When you go back to Genesis chapter 3, when the serpent was talking to the woman, she already knew what God said because Adam should have communicated to her. Satan comes on the scene and makes a suggestion. She already had a thought from God. But if she didn't act on what we saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, she allowed what Satan said to get above the knowledge of God and we see what happened as a result. They failed. They missed the mark. Because she didn't and neither did Adam. So both of them, you know, sometimes people just blame Eve. 
They blamed the woman. But you know, it was Adam's fault. Because he stood right there, and listen to me, he didn't protect his home. So when you don't protect your home, man of God, you allow the enemy to come in to cause destruction in your family. So you got to protect your home by finding out what is the Lord saying about my family. Which is why it's so important. I don't know why I'm going down this route, but I'm just going to follow the Holy Ghost. Why it's so important for the man to be able to hear clearly from God. You got to know the voice of God and you got to practice the presence of God and the voice of God. And then you step out by faith, knowing that this is what God told me. Now, let me give you the balance, because as the woman, God anointed you to help him. So when he comes to you and tells you that this is the direction that he believes that the Lord is taking the family in, don't buck up against them. Because of what happened in the past. See, what the enemy is after is division. You can get on one accord. That's where God will command the blessing when there's one accord. So stop arguing with each other. Strife, division, there's no unity in the household and God cannot move. You want God to move in your household? Got to get on one accord. Find out what he said. That's the clock lady over here telling me 10 minutes left. That's all? Shoo, Lord, have mercy. Okay. Go to, go to Corinthians. Oh, ah. Okay, how much time I got left? 10 minutes. <laughs> all right, point number two. Put point number two up. Don't let the enemy steal your vision. In a minute, we're going to have a little bit more time. We'll tell you this at the end of service. Point number two, don't let the enemy steal your vision. We were designed to believe what we see. Sometimes we're looking at the wrong stuff. Now, go to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs 28, verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The NIV version, I love this, reads this way. When there is no revelation inside information, things that have been hidden but now they are revealed when there is no revelation people cast off restraint but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instructions listen to me folks without revelation from God you can't see where you're supposed to go you don't even know your purpose in life without God revealing it to you. See, school may get you some level of understanding, but it is literally God who has to take the covers off so you can fully see. And I'm not talking about seeing with the natural, because if you're looking at things from the natural Man, your eyes about to play some tricks on you. <laughs> and if you live long enough, you know that eventually your eyes change. Okay, let me then, okay. Let me, let me say that again. Your your eyes change. So I can see this way, but when it comes to looking at stuff this close, oh, I gotta put because my eyesight has changed. So if you're looking at things through these lenses, you're going to miss the mark. 
God hadn't called you to see things through your eyes. You see through your eyes, but you're supposed to see things from your spirit that literally will illuminate everything on the out. Boy, I'm preaching better than you saying amen today. You have to constantly imagine yourself the way God said you are. One of the fastest growing crimes in America is identity theft. Because they steal your bank account. They can mess your credit up. But I want you to know that's not anything new. Things are first spiritual, then they're natural. You know who the enemy is? He's a thief. He's a kleptomaniac. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he comes to come, he comes to steal your identity. He comes to destroy your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. If he could have killed you, he would have did it by now. He would have. But he's not able to. He has to get you to believe in his lack of ability. He has to deceive you, which is why it's so important not to pay attention to what's happening on the outside. Things are happening on the inside when you can't even see what's happening. See, change doesn't happen first on the outside. Transformation doesn't happen on the outside. Now, I don't know if I should use myself as an example of this because I've been the same way since high school and college. You know, on Facebook a couple of months ago, someone challenged me, you can't even fit your high school letterman jacket. I put my high school letterman jacket on. I said, you really think I can't fit this? I'm the same size since high school. So I don't know if I'm the best. <laughs> don't pay attention to what's happening on the outside. Pay more attention to what's happening on the inside because that's when change, that's when transformation will take place. You don't know what's happening with people on the inside. That's why it's important for us to pray. And if we believe what we pray, watch this, because this is the area that we miss it at. We would treat people the way we've been praying. We would then see them how we've been praying. But what we have a tendency to do is, yeah, we're praying, but then when we see them, we don't treat them that way. <laughs> so really, do you actually believe what you've been praying? Come on, somebody. My question is today, how far can you see? How far can you see? Now, I'll close with this. Go to Genesis chapter 15. See, this is not only a fight of faith, a fight of what you believe. It's also a fight of of sight. How far can you believe? So this is not a new concept. God has been teaching this concept all through the word. Now Genesis chapter 15 verse number 1. After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying fear not Abram I am thy shield thy great exceeding reward. I'm going to bypass that. Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the steward of my house, this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, behold, to me thou hast given me no seed and one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be your heir. The one that's in the house that's not your heir, but he that shall come out of your own bow shall be thy heir. So at this point, Abraham had tried to help God out. 
Let me say it again. Abraham had tried to help God out and created a situation that was not of God. God said, okay, Abraham, although you did this, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to create something completely different. But Abraham in his mind could not fully understand what God was about to do. Notice, he could not understand because it was impossible. It, it wasn't logical. Abraham, the Bible says he was old and his wife was old, older. So they were past the age, the normal age of having children. It seemed impossible. So he's talking to God and he's like, well, I, I, I don't know how. I, I don't even have a kid. Watch this. Oh, Lord. And he brought him forth abroad or he took or he told Abraham, go on outside. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if you're able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall your seed be. So God told Abraham, you go outside and you look up. And if you're able to number the stars, that's how many children you are actually going to have. So God was telling Abraham that I am able to do more than what you can see. If you only believe what I'm saying. If you see it, and let me clarify that. If you see it in here, Come on, yeah. Come on. not see it on the outside. That's so good. If you see it in here, it's actually yours. Come on. If you find a promise in here, I know it might feel like it's not right. But if you see it in here, and you believe it, you grab hold of it, you start seeing yourself walking that promise out. It's already yours. From God's perspective, it's already a done deal. I don't know if you caught that. That's why, that's why he wrote it in the book. He's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. In other words, he's already given us a road map of victory. All we've got to do is find it in here. Be bold enough, be confident enough, and to see ourselves as though we are already walking in it. It's almost like if you're believing God for a new car. Find a scripture in the Bible that says it's yours. And then in the natural, go to the dealership and sit down in your car. Uh -oh, I didn't get a lot of help on that. You, you got the word. And even though, watch this, this is bold. Even though you may not have money. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that you don't need money. All you need is faith in God, and God can bring the money to you. <laughs> Let me say that again. If you had faith, see, faith can be your currency. All you need is to believe what God said. If God can use a St. Bernard dog to get you your money, how come you can't believe God to pay your DTE bill? Well, if God was able to use a fish to feed 5,000, in fact, it was over 5,000 men and women, two loaves and fish. If he was able to do that, he says, all you got to have is faith the side of a mustard seed. You know how small 
a mustard seed actually is? It's smaller than when you do this. All he's asking you to do is to believe. And whoever that person is, if you believe what he says, all things are impossible. All things that are impossible are possible. Do you realize that God specializes in impossible circumstances? The moment that it's impossible is the moment you just say, Woo, go, glory, Woo, glory to God. I know that this in the natural is not possible, but I serve a God that will do the impossible. And all I got to do is find out what he said, believe what he said, renew my mind and start seeing myself the way God sees me. And folks, you will walk in some things that you've never walked in. You will be able to do some things that you've never done. And listen to me, it won't be you. It'll be him working through you. But it starts with the word. All right. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed in prayer today. No one's walking or talking. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed in prayer. We never, ever want to take this part of our services for granted that maybe you're in here or maybe you're online. And maybe you don't know this God who we're talking about. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus that we're talking about. Man, this is the greatest decision that literally I've made in my life. And that is having a relationship with him. See, Christianity is not about rules or regulations, what you can do, what you can't do. It's really about that relationship that you have with the Father. So if you're here today or you're watching today and you don't have a relationship, you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, you've never allowed him to be Lord, Master, and Savior of your life, then God, according to the word, he's not your father. John chapter 1 says, but as many as receive him, to them gave he right to become the sons of God. So if you desire to be a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, the way that that happens, you've got to receive the one who knew no sin, the one who was the substitute so that we can be right with God. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're out there today, it's real simple. God made it so plain, so simple that even a child can receive. He says, all you've got to do is believe. See, we will never get away from believing. Believe with what? Believe with your heart and acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus is the son of the living God. When you do that, you'll become God's son and you'll become God's daughter and you'll be in the family of God and now you can live according to the kingdom of God, God's way of doing what he does. You might be out there and you might say, Pastor, yes, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life and God is my father, but I'm out of fellowship with God. I haven't been walking with God. I haven't been living according to God's word. The Bible simply calls that missing the mark. And how do you get back to the place where you're back into right standing with the Father? You acknowledge what you've done and then you make a decision to what the Bible says to repent. The word repent means I was going in one direction and I'm going in a total opposite direction. But that's a heart decision like everything else. You've got to mean it from your heart. You've got to acknowledge the area that you missed it at and God says, oh, man, I'm faithful, I'm just, I'll forgive you. In fact, when you mean it from your heart, God will see you as though you've never made one mistake. You talking about a great deal? That's the God that we serve. So if you're out there today, you're not born again, or you're not sure that you're born again, the Bible says these things were written so that you know, you know that you have life eternal or eternal life. Eternal life is living with God in the present. You're out of fellowship. You want to come back home. If you mean this from your heart, where you're sitting at or where you're standing at or wherever you're watching from, God will not only save you, but you'll be back into right standing. So repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. 
I'm running away from sin and I'm running back towards you. And because of my confession today, I am born again. I am in right standing with the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to say before my wife comes up, congratulations and either welcome to the family of God or welcome back to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Was that some if good word ready. today? Oh, I'm so, yeah. yes. I know you was ready. <laughs> I was ready to go on to the next segment of our, our, our agenda here. So if you just prayed that prayer today, what we want you to do is go on over to www.thelifecenterchurch.org and we want you to click on Receive Jesus. We want to send something to you that's going to set you up for success based on the decision that you made on today. So amen. Now, if you all, if this is your first time visiting with us here, we do our services a little bit different. We actually put our worship at the end of the service. You know, when I was sitting there, I was looking of the word worship and it actually means an expression and so as a result of the fact that we receive such rich word that will equip us for success in our own individual lives that will actually change the trajectory or the path or maybe even disrupt some patterns that we had to set us on the right path we want to say father we thank you so let's begin to worship God today as a result of the word we, that we heard if you all can stand up on your feet today that was some good stuff that was some good teaching on today. I also want to encourage you all as well. Our services are streamed on um, Facebook as well as YouTube. It's uploaded the next day. You know, oftentimes when I see people come in with like a notebook, you know what that represents? I'm expecting God to speak. And I don't want to forget anything that he said. So I want to encourage you, go online, listen to the service again, pull out your notebook and sit in expectation, not for pastor, but for God to speak to you individually about your personal situation. And when you become an expectation, guess what? He will never disappoint. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and just worship the Father today. You
portion is in his presence in his presence you know my husband was talking about <laughs> um using your faith and it made me think about a scripture like if you can just find it in the book in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 it gives us a promise he says for as many are the promises of God that you can find in this book he said they're all answered yes I mean how much easier does it get he said for as many as are the promises that you can find in this book the answer to every one of them is yes so if you are believing God for healing he said I'm not withholding that for you my answer is yes if you're believing God for prosperity or God to give you direction and how about for the youth in here if you believe in God for a college scholarship you find the promise in the book put him in remembrance of the word second Corinthians 1 and 20 said all the answers to the promises that can find they're all answered yes we have an ironclad promise we have an ironclad promise all answered yes if we can find it in the book amen I guess it's not my turn to preach this Sunday put me up next week tag me in I got this okay you all can be seated amen, amen. tag me in it is okay. time to receive our offering there are multiple ways that you can give here at the Life Center Church uh, they should appear on the screen as you are completing your offering. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. You see the baby said, hallelujah. They was worshiping. Y'all going to put Sydney C. Go ahead. They, were, they was worshiping. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. Paul says, now you Philippians know also in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again up to my necessity. Paul says, not because I desire a gift, but my heart's desire is that you understand that when you give, there's fruit that will abound to your account. Then Paul says, because you have given to me, I have all. He says, I am bound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus. Notice the things which were sent from you, the offering that they sent to help the apostle Paul, live and to preach the gospel he says it was an odor of a sweet smell it was sacrificial giving and that giving that they gave he said it was well pleasing to god and then paul says but my god shall supply cram to the net full all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ the anointed one. It is so important that in order for us to operate in God's kingdom, we know that the way God's kingdom operates, it operates by seed. Everything that we do is seed. We're just using this text in terms of an offering, but everything that we do, everything is seed. So if you want seed to grow in a particular area, you've got to sow in that area. If you want somebody to pray for you, then you pray for someone that's a seed. If you want someone to love you, then you demonstrate love to them. That's a seed. And so when you're talking about giving, that's a seed. And Paul said, now because you gave unto me, my God will now supply all of your need according to everything that he has. Has nothing to do with what you have or what you don't have. It's all according to the seed that you sow. We firmly believe if it's his will, it's his bill. Now, put that on the screen because there are reasons why we give here at the Life Center Church. We oh, know no. we ultimately give because we, there we go. So I want this to kind of get in your heart. I know I've been saying it every single week. Uh, get this in your heart. Get this in your spirit. This will literally revolutionize your life. We give because it's in the word of God. We give because it's the will of God. We give because it's the way of God. We give because it's the life of God. We give because we love God. We give because we trust God. And we give because we've made God a priority in our life. So why don't you go ahead and lift up your tithe or your offering to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let's pray. Father, what an honor and what a privilege it is that you've given us seed to sow. 
So we bring our seed into the good ground of the life-centered church, knowing that more men, women, boys, and girls will first have the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord, their Master, and their Savior, and secondarily, they'll come into the knowledge of the truth. Angels of God, we command you and charge you to go forth, harvest our return, for we have need of it for the kingdom's sake, as well as for our own. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can receive the offering. For those that are well, given by... they typically give it on the way out because okay, cool. we knew kind of like uh, COVID style. Okay, so just a few major, major, tremendously major, like super huge announcements. I know some of them already know. That's why they give it a woo-woo here at the Life Center. You want me to start or will you start? Because you might tell it too much. <laughs> you want to start or you want me to start? I'll start it. Okay. Uh, then you might have to pull me back. I will pull you back. Uh, this is the balance side. <laughs> uh, and so... When we first got the assignment from the Lord to come back, um, we just said, yes. We didn't know everything. And so we just stepped out by faith. Many of you know that the last six years we were in Massachusetts and we didn't fully under, understand. I go back, yeah, I go back because it set it up. Okay. Uh, we didn't fully understand the big assignment that the Lord was doing. And so, and I got to say this part, and then we'll go on. What the Lord had done through us in Massachusetts was to literally start breaking down denominational division that's happening in his body. When you look at the scriptures and you look at the word, there is no, in the Bible, I'm not talking about man, I'm talking about the word. There is no separation. There is no charismatic there is no non-denomination. There is no Protestant. There is no Baptist. Catholic. No Catholics. You know, man made that stuff up. It's That's just not, all the body yeah, of Christ. The body of Christ. And, and what happens for years, that that's really caused the body not to really fulfill in its totality what God desires. There's been so much division because of that. One of the most segregated times on the planet is during church time, Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, because you've got different people that believe different things and it's caused so much division. Well, when you think about heaven, there ain't no white side in heaven, there ain't no black side in heaven, there's no side for east side in heaven, there's no Catholic side. It's all people who said Jesus is Lord of my life. One body. It, that's all it is. And so there's been this major division in the body of Christ. And I firmly believe as we are preparing the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there will be more of this uncovering. And it happened, it started in Massachusetts. We didn't understand all we did, we just says yes. And so the Lord connected us with the Jewish people. And it was, I think out of all the places that we've had the opportunity to serve God, that probably for us spiritually was the best six years because of the relationship and what God had done there. There was no division, there was no strife, it was just we all serve God. And we were able to be a blessing to the community so that all would be able to see. We just obey God. So we get back here and the Lord tells us to start and we start the pre-launch services and the Lord opens up another door again that literally will break down the division that's happening in the body of Christ. So that's a part of our assignment um, that we're seeing now is that the Lord is using us to bust down this division that's happening in the body. And so um, when we first started, we started obviously here. Um, the Lord opened up the door, graced us here to get started. Uh, but then he opened up another door <laughs> and the, the door that he's opened will start in two weeks. So we will um, change locations. Let me get a logistics okay. here. Go ahead, get logistics. <laughs> okay, so on April the 3rd, we, we will not be having services here in the Vista Tech any longer.
Right. We're actually going to be having services uh, in the, this is interesting, in the Family Life Center <laughs> at New St. Mark Baptist Church on Eight Mile and Telegraph. So it's, it's in Detroit, but it's actually right on the, the border of Southfield. Like you can literally <laughs> walk across the street and be in Southfield. And so the phenomenal part about it is that um, there's a very interesting dynamic because it'll set the life center church up financially. Like what they're uh, charging us for lease is just, it's just supernatural. And also in exchange in the agreement, they asked us to be their youth pastors. So if you know, if you <laughs> go back with ba us anytime. We was like, y'all know we ain't Baptists, right? But <laughs> so if you go back with yeah. us anytime um, in the past, you know, when we first started uh, being in full-time ministry, I was the youth pastor. And so when you talk about that's like, so, so, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm still a youth pastor, so I still wear gym shoes, not for y'all, but for youth, because I'm staying youthy. So, you know, when I have my outfits on, just to kind of help y'all out a little bit, yeah, 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 I'm still youthy. Even though I'm 51, I'm still youthy. So just to kind of help y'all out and with terminology. So when I put my outfit on, my daughter said, Dad, you know you eating that. I'm, kind of, I'm helping the old folks out so you can stay young. She put her head down in the back. <laughs> She's like, don't she put her head down? So youth, I'm, I'm eating that today. Yeah, but she said I just looked okay. She didn't say my was. She said I just looked okay. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Charles. Thank you. So just letting you all know. So uh, starting April 3rd on, uh, we will be. Um, and, and here's the thing. So if you are not part of our e-blast, we're e-blasting all the information out tomorrow morning uh, in regards to the address, the location, and all of that. It's a very nice space. Uh, it's in their chapel. It's a little bit smaller here uh, than the Vista Tech. Uh, this seat's about 300, but this seat's maybe about 125, 150. And we enjoy what we we're enjoying about that is it'll intimacy. create intimacy for us to be able to start building relationships as opposed to like Auntie Lulu maybe way in the back of the visit tech and then she slide out the door yeah, or whatever. Like Alexa and way in the back back there. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Good to see you, mom. Good to see. You. <laughs> so that's our heart's desire is to start to make sure that we develop relationships because we're one family here at the Life Center Church, and then you can bring your family in as well. The other thing that we're excited about doing is that we're able to keep our equipment on the premises, um, so we also have a, a little room as well too and then for that room where we're going to do very soon is we're going to open up our kids church all oh, the parents got hyped up in here okay our kids church so we need help because when we were in Boston I was the praise and worship leader as you all see now I was also the children's church uh, minister what else was I, I was doing over the uh, altar call all of that so as we begin to prepare for that we wanted to do it the first Sunday but um, what we our hearts desire for a lot of you all who already are volunteering you know we don't want you to serve more than twice a month we don't want to burn you out and, and, so if we got to be the heavy then we'll do that and so you all has to, uh, have to also understand that we've been in this for over 20 years so at one time I was on staff at a mega church and I understand because I was the ministry I was over ministry of helps so I understand how people can easily be burnt out mm -hmm. where church is now like work mm -hmm. and then when it's time for you to actually come and sit down you don't want to come because all you're used to doing is working 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 so you don't necessarily come to get fed you come to work we're the total opposite of that your family is important and because I was a youth pastor I understood and the reason why I had a lot of counseling issues with kids was because I was talking to their parents who were serving they were there all day long with their kids and then the kid grows up not wanting anything to do with God mm -hmm. because they believe in their mind that God took them away from their parents so, so we believe in that balance side and so if every person gets involved then we kind of spread it around. I left out a major point. <laughs> it's going to change the time of our time. service Correct. as well. I, I, I know that was a major point. <laughs> so our service time now uh, for temporarily or, or for a season will be at 8.30 a.m. 
Oh, amen. I <laughs> praise God for that. So we, and our services are 90 minutes long. So guess what? You'll be out about what? 10 o'clock. Y'all go have brunch. We'll go over to Leo's Coney Island. If you want to get you a brunch or something like that, y'all, you know, you're going down to J. Alexander's. So uh, our services are 90 minutes long. That's why I'll be on Pastor too. I'm keeping the time. So our services will be at 830 because what we don't want to do is they didn't want to overwhelm their parking lot right. because New St. Mark, they have their services at 1015. But what we're so excited about is that we're already gelling as one family and the pastors there are so amazing they know that we're not from a Baptist denomination and their words to us because we were like okay well what about when the kids come and they're basically going to be experiencing life center culture because that's our church and basically they said if a child comes in and they come into relationship with Jesus as a result of the word that was taught does it matter what denomination they does it matter because they just joined the kingdom of God because what we're one body and one family so we're excited about where this this journey will take us as a church family so make sure if you're not signed up on our email list please do so because tomorrow morning uh, I'll e-blast it out if you want to know how to go onto our website and it'll click on connect with us it'll automatically dump you into our e-blast so I think that's all the announcements for today that's the big one yeah if you want to volunteer and helping us get the children's uh the children's kids church off the <laughs> hunter said I want to volunteer off the ground let us know because we would like to do that sooner rather than later even even if we just start with the with the two of them uh, because we want the parents to be able to come into service undisturbed and undistracted <laughs> and receive the word amen we done we done all right everybody on your feet as we go ahead and dismiss our services on today uh, if you can believe it he can do it come on family follow along on the screens
care what you're going through today. If you can release your faith and believe God for it, he has promised that he will show up in the midst of your situation and sit down with you in the midst of that situation and turn the tables in your favor. Can you believe it? Say this. I believe, yes, yes, I do believe. I believe, yes, yes, I do believe. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you the peace that already has been provided for you and that you walk out in that peace the rest of this week. I declare in Jesus' name that everything you set your hands to do this week, it shall prosper and bring forth much abundant fruit and that fruit shall remain and that you will allow the love of God to be demonstrated everywhere you go so that other people can see the love of God on the inside of you and come into relationship with a good God that loves them as a result of what's on the inside of you. Thank you so much for coming to the Life Center Church. We will be here next week at the Vista Tech Center and April 3rd, we will see you all at New St. Mark. Amen. Man, you are dismissed. If you want to help us out with the children, send me an email or something. That would be helpful. Can you can you call a sister? Can you help out with the babies at the new church? Can we put on the veggie tails? <laughs>